So, when you first started getting into music, yeah. was it always a dream to come out and break it in America? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just very lucky that I get to go and play music everywhere, all over the world. You know, very lucky. You know, I wouldn't slip my throat if I didn't get to do it, but you know, still counting my blessings. And the great thing about this is that you're making music that you yourself want to make as opposed to having to conform like maybe other artists have to. You know, when you were making this album, putting it together with people like Salam Remy and Mark Ronson, mm -hmm. right? Uh, did you know when you were mastering it for the last time, did you know you were on something big? I know, I, I, you know, I don't write stuff that I don't like. I really liked the stuff I was writing, you know. So I just, um, I just like it, I suppose enthusiastic about making it so I knew it would be good because I was so happy about doing it so excited to do it. On the first album you used Salam. I mean this is one of the hip-hop great producers of all time uh, for the entire album. On this album you decided to split it pretty much 50-50 yeah. with Mark Ronson. Uh, why did you want to enlist Mark Ronson? Um, I, um, my friend Guy Moot who runs EMI Publishing mm -hmm. said to me that I should work with Mark. I was really reluctant just because I know I'm onto a good thing with Salam. Salam and I are very insular. We work quite closely and together. We don't talk to anyone else. We're quite, you know, we ch we talk to you know we talk to each other about stuff like that. But you know, I met Mark. We had a really, really good, uh, you know, we got on really well personally, as well. You know, we're like brother and sister. So, uh, you know, he was ex as excited about doing things and as enthusiastic as me which was exactly the same things I love about Salam. You know, Salam's very, you know, a lot of producers are quite, you know, like, how can we do that? Or right. that's never been done before. But they're just like, cool, let's do this, let's do that. And how important to the finished product is that kind of relationship between artist and producer? Um, I suppose you need to be close enough to someone to trust them, but not so close that you can't be like, piss off, that's a really bad idea. Right. It's what Mark actually said in an interview. Yeah. That the one thing working with you was that if you didn't like something, you would just go and say, I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't want to waste his time. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to go along with it just because, you know, he gives me puppy dog eyes. <laughs> Do you ever kind of sit back and think, look, when you think successful female artists in America, you think Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, you think Shakira. These are all very kind of polished images. You know, these girls step out. Uh, they're probably ready for the cover of Vogue magazine. Um, but you yourself have come out doing, you know, you didn't. You defied convention, not just with your sound, but also with your look, right? How important is image to your um, career? I'm not really fussed. I'm very lucky that I got to make the kind of album I wanted to make. That's pretty much it. The rest of it, I'd tell everyone to piss off, so it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Uh, performing out to the US, uh, you're about to play a gig here in just a couple of hours. Is there one track on the album that you really enjoy performing? I love playing them all. I love playing me and Mr Jones, though. I love doing... Uh, uh, what do I really like? I like all of them. Uh, me and Mr. Jones, I have a question. I know you're a big fan of Nas. Mm. Was that for Nazir Jones? Yeah. It was? It's for Nas. Um, it's basically me saying about how a fellow I used to see didn't get me in to see Slick Rick, which upset me. Right. But then I think when he didn't get me in to see Nas, I just thought, you know what, I don't even like you that much, that you're going to not take me to see Nas. You know, Slick Rick, that's, that's slighting, that hurts. <laughs> but no, I do know that's, um, that's um, it's just rude. I don't even, I sacrifice our friendship for that. Now, you're someone that's been strictly about the music. Like you say, it's just about you making the music that you want to make. Um, when you were putting this album together and coming together with this kind of sound, uh, you know, it's very different from what everyone else is doing. <clears throat> yeah. Was that always a conscious decision to end up with this sound? Did you have it in mind before you stepped into the studio or did it happen kind of organically with Mark and Salah? No, nothing I do is like, listen, I do, listen, I'm just a musician, yeah? I don't think about who's going to hear it, who's going to buy it, who, who I'd like to hear it or buy it. I only make music that I would like to hear. That's all I've done. I'm lucky that I've been able to make it. Well, you've made music that you like to hear, but also what seems to be happening at the moment, the modern day hip hop, some of the greats are really kind of accepting the sound that you've done. Uh, how did you feel when you get given an accolade like Jay-Z, stepping on a remix? Uh, yeah, I suppose it's lovely, isn't it? You don't, really, you don't ever hear people like that would ever hear what you do, let alone put a, put a, a, a thing on it. Now, you've been real busy. I don't know whether you've read 
but uh, NME com and loads of different websites and said that Prince today did a press conference in the UK where he's just announced kind of 20 dates all in a row and he's requested you. What? Did you not know this? No. So he went and did a press conference in London today announcing 20 dates. This is going to be the last time he ever performs all of his greatest hits <laughs> before he goes off to travel the world and study the Bible and he said one artist's name that he would like to come on board and perform a song with and that was you. Prince is going to study the Bible. Yeah. Listen, stay to the point. He's Prince asking for you. Prince is going to be a rabbi. <laughs> I'm the last. I would, uh, listen. Does that blow your mind still when you, you know, so many artists have come up to you and said, listen, we want to work with you to have Prince. I'm going to Minneapolis to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Prince. Um, yeah. I hope I can do it though. I don't know why I'm smiling. I really, I mean, I'll, I'll, drop, I'll drop everything to do that. Well, he said it only yesterday. That must blow your mind. Oh, my, you yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. How do you do it? How do you make, make sure that you stay grounded? You know, not Stuff even like that doesn't make me go, oh, I must be the nut. Stuff like that makes me go, I want to do it tomorrow and the night after the night after. You know. I just want to find out now. I'm now I want to find out after this. I want to find out how solid that is. I okay. want to see. Well, he said it, and if he said it, and you're able to do it, would you do it? Yeah. Okay. The, the other big on. thing. It's just All day long. <laughs> It's just getting bigger and bigger at the moment. Uh, just announced the MTV Movie Awards. Yeah. Huge show. Yeah. You've performed at festivals in front of crowds. Is it more nerve-wracking? I mean, do you still get nervous? Is it more uh, nerve-wracking doing those big TV shows or doing those big concerts? Um, neither, I suppose. Neither. It's adrenaline, isn't it? Yeah. It's not easy. It's nice. Fun. And the MTV Movie Awards. Very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. I suppose stuff like that's more nerve-wracking because you worry about what you look like on telly rather than uh, how you set, you know. And at the same time, you can take it again you, if you have to, but you right. don't want to break up the, you know, the, you know, all the atmosphere and all that. You come over to America, you've done some huge shows. You've done David Letterman, now the MTV Movie Awards. Uh, rubbing shoulders with all the biggest and best. I mean, you know, you're someone that doesn't really, like you said, you don't, you know, think that's it, it's brilliant. But do you ever kind of let it dawn on you that you will be, you know, people like Snoop Dogg? Did you hear what he went and said? No. That you inspired his new album, that he was crazy about the music, for the pure reason that you did the album, only you, no guest appearances, nothing like that. And he went on to say how much uh, he was a fan of your music. He's cold, he's nice. I met him the other day, he's very nice. Right? Really cool. So New York is a good experience so far. I met him on the other, on that way, um, up west. But it's <laughs> I met him up west. Yeah, I met him in Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you're Upper West Side. Yeah. Oh, whatever. But yeah, um, yeah, very nice fella. Okay. It's cool. It's not like it's cool. Now you bring uh, people that have been, uh, you know, around you since you were in London. Uh, do you get to bring your other half with you when you go on tour? Is that very important for you? Because leaving uh, London, I guess the one thing you leave behind are family and friends. Yeah, I'm um, with my fiance, which is nice. Obviously, but I don't really get to spend enough time with him, but it's cool. Is it easy to balance kind of, you know, what is turning out to be a very busy time in your life with having kind of a regular relationship? No, I want to, I want to wait on him hand and foot for the rest of my life. It doesn't really go hand in hand, but I'm an age. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Um, so this album, you're still in the middle of promoing it, playing loads of tracks out there. At which point do you start thinking about your musical direction on the next album? You always working? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I've got loads of stuff left over really, so it'll be more of the same, more of the same. More of the same sound? Yeah, I've got loads of stuff left over, so. And same producers, both Mark and Salam working on it? I don't know, it depends what they're both doing. It depends what they're both doing. I'd love to work with them both again. I mean, uh, I'm not someone who'll try something just because it's stuck. You know, I know what works. I know what I love. I love, you know, I'm not going to meet, I'm not going to meet two fellas who I work with so well. Now, I don't know whether you heard this as well, but um, Back to Black, when I first heard it, it, apart from being an excellent song, also strikes me as a perfect song for a Bond movie. Now, I wasn't the only one that went and said that. Apparently, Barbara Broccoli, you know, the woman that was involved with James Bond from the very start, has gone and said, it's a perfect track and she would like to offer you a role 
in a Bond movie. Now, I know you should mm. never believe what you read, but have you heard anything about this? No. Would you ever like to be a Bond girl? Oh, yeah. I'm not an actress, am I? Would you ever like to do the track for a Bond movie? Yeah. Standard, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So you would do the track, but you would never appear in the movie? Well, no, never. I'm just not an actress, do you know what I mean? No, it can't be true. Nothing that you'd never like to try? It? No. Now, we know sooner or later you're going to be shooting the next video yeah. with David Le Chappelle. Yeah. Uh, what's the treatment for that Why video? Why do you know everything I'm doing better than me? Because that's the job that I have to do. Okay. My research. Do you mind talking about it? You what's kind of showing me up because I haven't got Danny the real what I'm talking about. It's all right, but do you know what the next single's going to be? Well, I think we're reshooting Rehab. Oh, you are? Or well, Tears Dry on their own. Okay. We'll take that second answer. Oh, yeah? And... Do you know what the concept behind the video is? No. Do you just turn up on the day and do what you do? No, we will have meetings, I'm sure. Or someone will say something. That's why I was curious. Like, how hands-on are you with everything? Yeah, I'm pretty, like, uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Cool, yeah. Anyway. And why is that so important? Because I'm quite shy. I'm quite an insecure person. I'm not going to, you know, do stuff that makes me feel like I'm being an idiot. <laughs> And then getting up on stage, is that something you still get shy doing? No. It's quite exciting. You ever get nerves? How do you calm the nerves? No, it's quite exciting. I don't really get nervous. It's adrenaline. Right. And how have the New York crowds, the American crowds, been uh, accepting towards you? Yeah, really cool. Good stuff. Well, look, we wish you the very best of luck with everything. Thank you, baby. Uh, your next step after this, you're doing a performance tonight. What's on the agenda for the next? Uh, I know something else. I know you're going to Miami soon. Yeah, tonight, tomorrow night. Then we're going to Canada, I think. Yeah, and my dad's going to be there. Oh, your father's going to be there coming yeah. out to see you? Yeah. Is that the first time he's seen you performing in America? Mm, maybe. He's, um, you mentioned him in some, well, in one of your tracks, yeah. Rehab. How important was he to your musical career, kind of starting well, out? My dad's, really, my dad's like one of my best friends, so it would be nice to see him. And, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, then we're going to Miami just to do the video and just spend some time together. Excellent. A bit of downtime with yeah. family. Um, being here in New York, you're in the home of some of the greatest rappers of all time. I know you're a huge fan of people like Nas, yeah. Most Death. Yeah. Uh, do you think, and I just had this idea, that you would ever want to do, I know you have music left over from this album to do for your next album, mm. With the way they're accepting you at the moment, you know, a Brit coming over, a female Brit coming over, hip hop has truly accepted you. Would you ever think about doing kind of a collaborative effort with some of your favourite artists? I'd love to. I'd love to work with people like, you know, there's so many people I'd love to work with. Like Nas, Most Def. I'd love to work with Busta Rhymes. I'd love to work wow. with Rod Digger. I'd love to work with Rod Digger. There's loads of people I'd love to work with. And these things. But must I'd love to work with Rod Digger. And Mos. That would be incredible. But surely, can't these things actually happen? I mean, how does it work? Do you just say it on camera, hope that one of them sees it and something comes through? They won't through? see it. Why? This is MTV News. Oh, cool. OK, then, please. Raw Digger. Most Def. Puppy Dog Eyes. Please. You learned that from Mark Ronson. Um, Why would that be so great for you? I love them. I love them. I learned a lot of stuff about I just learned how to write songs with people like that. I just really like them and uh, like if they like my stuff, then cool. Because you learned what? Hip-hop was what you grew up kind of listening to? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Sweet and sour? I mean, like, yeah, so... <laughs> so, yeah, if they want to do a track, I'd love to. All right, well, Amy, look, we wish you the best of luck with that. Cool. I hope Rod Digger and most Def Cool. How could you not? Yeah, me too. Good luck with everything. Cool. Enjoy Miami. Thanks, baby. Enjoy Yo. the show tonight. Yo, I will do. What can, what can everyone expect? If anyone hasn't come and seen the Amy Winehouse show, you say you're nervous, but it doesn't come across on stage. I didn't say I was nervous. Sorry, you say you're shy. Okay, whatever you just said. Yeah. Thanks, so, Tim. 